The intent of this video is to review the initial World War II air-to-air -air combat experiences of the British 303 caliber cartridge. The British adopted the 303 cartridge in their belted machine guns, frontline fighters, and bombers. The source of the data shown is extracted from a 1940, 109-page declassified document, Air Operations in the European War, I stumbled upon while data mining World War II archive information on U.S. bombers. I don't believe this document has been widely circulated. The document provides lessons learned from the air war during the periods from January 16, 1940 through July 31, 1940. The British 303 caliber cartridge is shown in comparison to the Browning 50 caliber armor piercing incendiary cartridge. The armor piercing incendiary cartridge can be identified by the silver bullet tip. This is the British 303 cartridge next to the German MG 151 20mm autocannon high explosive mine round. British bomber interceptors contemplated upsizing their armament beyond the 303 cartridge to contend with German armored bombers, as discussed on page 10. The effective range of the 303 cartridge was very limited. 18 out of the 18 bomber interceptor attacks were successful at ranges of 200 yards or less. Only one bomber interceptor attack was successful out of the 14 attacks for firing ranges between 200 yards and 600 yards, as shown on page 28 of the report. These initial skirmishes between British fighters and German bombers imply RAF bomber interceptors need to open fire at 200 yards or closer to be effective. U.S. fighter effective range was out to 400 yards with the 50 caliber cartridge. U.S. bomber gunners 50 caliber effective range was defined at 600 yards. The 303 rifle caliber cartridge ballistics are likely responsible for the short effective kill range. The British were clearly struggling on the appropriate action to take regarding the combat effectiveness of the 303 caliber cartridges, as shown on page 49. Seasoned British pilots favored upsized caliber armament, while less experienced pilots preferred increasing the number of 303 caliber guns. The Air Ministry was seriously concerned with the ineffectiveness of the 303. A German bomber brought down in Scotland was found to be riddled with almost 20,000 holes, as discussed on page 50. Armaments engineers were urging the replacement with a 303 caliber with either a 50 caliber or 20 millimeter cannon. Page 54 of the document boldly states, the 30 caliber machine gun appears to be finished as an effective weapon for air combat. Experienced British officers believe the 50 caliber gun should be considered for bomber flexible mounts in lieu of the 303, as discussed on page 84. In summary, early war British RAF Air Ministry evaluations clearly found the 303 caliber cartridge unsuitable for air to air combat, yet the 303 persisted throughout the remainder of the war. Any thoughts on why the British retained the 303 caliber cartridge in their aircraft? Look in the video description for a link to download the full 109 page document that was shown.